So Tamar, we're thrilled to have you here. Thank you for making this Thank special you trip. For inviting. You are what we would call in the United States the Deputy Speaker of the Georgian Parliament. You also chair two of the most powerful um, of the caucuses, one with the United States and the other with Israel. Maybe we could begin by asking you, why did you choose to associate yourself both with the United States and with Israel and the Georgian Parliament? Well, first of all, um, I should say that I'm um, honored to be here. And uh, unfortunately, the prime minister could not come. But I'm happy because I was given a chance to <laughs> replace him here. Uh, well, yes, indeed, I decided um, to, I picked these two parliaments. Well, first of all, with the United States, because I have personal as well as um, um, my experience with the United States is that I studied there, I lived there, and I have admiration of this country. And also, uh, the United States is a number one strategic partner for Georgia. And um, we as a country count on the United States a lot. So I thought that United States Congress is a place which is most interesting for Parliament of Georgia to be friends with and to have strong ties and relationships. And as for the Israel, Georgia as a country has a huge history of love and respect and appreciation to Israel as a country and to Jewish people. And um, uh, I admire that. So I decided that these two countries would be a good alliance, very good decision to work with both of them. And actually, I think that this was a very good choice and very good decision. Well, we're happy as well. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. The Jews in Georgia have a long history. Can you give us the short version of the long history? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will try. Uh, well, well, Georgians as a nation are uh, proud of several things, and one of them is the 26th century of friendship with the, um, uh, between Jewish people and Georgian people. You said 2,600 uh, years. Yes, indeed. Actually, it, it's, uh, it's since the destruction of the first temple in 586 BC. And since then, uh, this history as long as it is, it's, it's centuries. And um, uh, actually, the recently, this year, the government of Georgia has recognized the 26th century of friendship between and relationship between Georgian and Jewish people as uh, non-material heritage, cultural heritage. And it was officially recognized. Uh, it was mentioned here that Georgia is, uh, was, has a Soviet past. It was a member of the Soviet Union. Uh, and uh, in late 80s, when um, uh, the relationship between Israel and Soviet Union, we know that was uh, very bad, Georgia was actually the first country which opened the door to um, Jewish agency, to Regis, and to other organizations who were officially welcomed and officially operated in Georgia, helping the Jewish community and uh, supporting Aliyah. And this was also a good sign of the, um, uh, the, the perfect relationship, very good relationship, love and respect between the people. Despite that, uh, the Georgia is a country, we have universities where history and um, Jewish history and Jewish language are taught in the universities. Uh, we have um, David Baz of a Museum of History of uh, Jews of Georgia, which was recently rehabilitated. We have synagogues, eight synagogues recently rehabilitated. Um, there is uh, enormous, and I could go on and on and on on this list because there are so many examples of um, these two nations being uh, very friendly. And um, there are also a lot of things that we share despite the um, uh, respecting each other. Georgia is a, a small country uh, with a history of suffering when different nations, different countries, we are trying to take our land, to take our identity, and somehow we still manage to survive and to maintain our territory. Well, part of it is occupied, but maintain our land to maintain our identity. And um, we have uh, many things that we share, and I think that this is somehow has contributed to the 
uh, mutual respect. Tamar, I want to come back to, the, to, to your regional situation in a mm -hmm. moment, but one of the outcomes of your decision to allow the Jewish agency in and permit Aliyah is most Georgian Jews no longer live in Georgia. Is that this correct? This is true. This is true. Can you give us some numbers about Jews in Georgia, Jews in Israel, and Jews elsewhere? Um, in Georgia, we have about uh, five to 6,000 Jews still living, and uh, much more tens of thousands have left as a result of Aliyah. And the community here in Israel today numbers over 100,000? It's maybe. over 100,000, so. 120,000 about, yeah. So let's come now to Georgia's regional situation. You said, like Israel, Georgia has some challenges. Talk to us about the biggest challenges. Um, the biggest challenge, of course, is the um, uh, occupation, because 20% of our territories is occupied by Russia. And uh, since they regaining our independence, actually this year we have also an um, important year. We are celebrating 100 years of uh, 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 first re democratic republic right. of Georgia, which was established uh, exactly 100 years ago. But then it was uh, terminated for some time, for 70 years by Soviet occupation. And um, since regaining our independence, we are suffering for our territorial integrity. 20% of Georgia's territories is um, occupied by Russia. It is under the effective control of Russia, and people who live there suffer from this occupation. On a, almost on a daily basis, we have people, Georgians, disappearing at the occupation line. We have people who are killed uh, in the occupied territories. We have ethnic Georgians who are discriminated on ethnic grounds in our occupied territories. So it's an ongoing um, huge challenge and huge uh, problem, the main challenge that we have. Georgia is a, a, a gateway to a, quite a challenging region. Georgia is a country which is a democracy which is a very credible and loyal partner to United States as well as to European Union, who uh, despite occupation and despite the problems that we have and despite the fact that we are in a very challenging neighborhood, who is working hard and trying hard to become, to be a progressive democracy and to develop ourselves despite the occupation. And in uh, this regard, of course, the support um, and uh, strategic partnership with the United States is the key for us because this support that uh, we have been getting from the United States and we have been contributing also, uh, we have been a really loyal, very credible partner, as I said, and we have been contributing and we continue to contribute to the uh, NATO troops in Afghanistan, all over the world. Georgia has the uh, largest representation among NATO troops being a non-NATO member country. And um, can, can you stop there for so, one moment? Because in your vision, Georgia one day becomes a member of NATO, I think. Hopefully. In your vision, Georgia becomes a member of the European Union one day. Are those realistic visions in your judgment? Well, this is what we aspire for. This is our uh, foreign and internal policy. This is what Georgia strives for because uh, we do not see ourselves with, we cannot see ourselves with Russia, we cannot see ourselves elsewhere, but with the Western world, with the European Union, with NATO, with our Western partners, and we work extremely hard to achieve that. And we have been delivering and showing results uh, in both terms, uh, in European Union, uh, in, in terms of integration to the European Union, we have received we have received the association agreement, we have received the f uh, free trade agreement, we have uh, received the visa free movement. So Georgians are traveling to EU member countries without passport passport requirements. As for the membership, of course, it is challenging, but. Uh, we are work, working extremely hard. Georgia is the best performing country in terms of implementing the agreements, the association agreement uh, with the European Union. So we are delivering results in, results in terms of reforming our institutions, developing our um, um, democracy, 
um, delivering on human rights and uh, bringing ourselves to the standards that are common in European Union. So this is a hard work. We move forward, but we have no alternative rather than that because the neighborhood that we have, the region where we are, does not uh, leave the any other chance for us. And we are, the Georgians are very much supporting this policy and government is very, working very hard to achieve that. Well, we certainly share your vision. I, I, it's hard to see the audience because of the bright lights, but my guess is some of the audience are saying to themselves, why is the world media so obsessed with Israel's situation and why do we know so little about the fact that 20% of Georgia is being occupied for 10 years now? Is the world paying enough attention to this occupation of Abkhazia and South Ossetia? Definitely not. Uh, and we have to work hard to bring it to the attention of the world, actually. And um, it uh, takes an enormous effort from, the, uh, from us, from the members of the parliament, from Georgian civil society, from Georgian government, to bring the uh, issue of occupation to attention of the colleagues from, the, uh, from different countries. Because the, it, the problem in our case is that um, Georgian-Russian war, last one, happened 10 years ago in 2008. And uh, we do not want the world to forget about it. We do not want uh, our partner countries, uh, partner countries to just ignore this and think that the, this problem does not exist. So we are the ones who are trying to speak about this as loudly as possible, to raise it in the parliament, partner parliaments, in parliaments of different countries, in media, in international media. But you are right, the attention towards this problem I think is not as much as it deserves because the conflict is not over, it's not frozen, it continues and people continue to suffer with this. My guess is that Israel would very generously send some of the media covering here <laughs> to Georgia and devote some attention uh, there uh, uh, as well. Um, I, I want to be sure the audience knows of one Georgian name that played a big role in the recent history of the Jewish people, and that was the last foreign minister of the Soviet Union. Edward Shevardnadze. Edward Shevardnadze, who partnered with Mikhail Gorbachev. Could you say a word about Shevardnadze's role at the time um, in changing the mindset of the Soviet Union um, as a Georgian, as a proud Georgian? Uh, well, Georgians' feeling about uh, Shevardnadze is quite controversial, I mm -hmm. should say, because of his role within the Georgia, because he was our second president, and uh, uh, both he has uh, left some important heritage, but he also uh, left the state which was quite corrupt. So the feelings mm -hmm. uh, about his role in Georgia are quite controversial. But uh, as far as I'm informed, he played important role in terms of the, uh, as, a, as a foreign minister of the Soviet Union. And uh, he was the one who uh, contributed to Elia in the uh, Soviet Union. Right. And uh, I think this, is a, this, this was an a, a important heritage that he played as the foreign minister yeah. of the Soviet Union. So, uh, Tamar, today, do you feel the United States, the country that you studied in, I think you were at the Harvard Kennedy School, is the United States paying enough attention to Georgia? Are you getting the support that you need? Is there more that you think we should know? And are there areas in your relationship with Israel, you said the relations are perfect, but can they be even more perfect? Yeah, perfect is, uh, it's never perfect probably, <laughs> it's, uh, it always can be better. Well, in relation to the United States, um, the uh, United States have been, has been providing uh, continuous support since regaining our independence. And I should say that um, this administration has been very vocal uh, in terms of showing his um, support. Um, uh, we recently hosted uh, Vice President Pence uh, in Tbilisi. 
our Prime Minister has uh, been very warmly welcomed in DC many times already by Vice President as well as President. And we have, uh, the, the most important for us is that we have heard the messages of support for our NATO integration. And as a country which is under a permanent uh, security threats um, under um, between Russia, Turkey, it's very challenging neighborhood. It's, it's extremely important for our security to, um, uh, to get closer to NATO and to integrate in NATO. So these supportive messages that are coming are crucially important. And I should also say that United States have a huge, uh, sub, uh, a huge role in uh, Georgia's transformation because Georgia has really transformed from a failed state to one of the very good achievers, leaders in terms of reforms and democratic development. And contribution of the United States has been crucial in that without the support that was coming from the United States, first of all, political support and uh, also technical support that would have been um, very difficult. I think that there are, though, there are, um, um, there is, of course, the space for um, improving this and uh, bringing this relationship to the uh, further levels in terms of economic cooperation, for example, the free trade agreement would be something that would be very tangible, very useful uh, achievement for Georgia and mutually beneficial, I would say, uh, especially taking into account that Georgia has free trade agreements with the uh, uh, European Union as well as with uh, many other countries. Um, and um, uh, it, the economy, as, as economic challenges are the key challenges for Georgia, cooperation on that front would be crucial. Of course, continuing political support and support to our territorial integrity is, uh, is basic. I should say that this administration made, a, well, um, in uh, last year, uh, the uh, Congress made a very important decision in the uh, Appropriations Act. They made a statement that no country that ignores the territorial integrity of Georgia can uh, get any assistance from the United States. So which countries so, in the world have recognized the Russian occupation? Uh, no, the Russian occupation is, uh, up to now, was recognized by four countries, and uh, recently the fifth one is added. So uh, Russia, uh, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Nauru, and Syria recently, several weeks ago, also uh, by the um, Syria. Uh, be, being so with, with by friends Russia. like Syria, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Russia, you have a sense. Yes. So they've Syria recently rec uh, recognized, uh, and this was the first recognition uh, after many years. Um, and of course, it was very painfully uh, received by, by us and by, right. by Georgians. This is why it is important for the world to pay attention uh, to this issue and not to ignore the problem of uh, Georgia's territorial integrity because Russia is playing its role and it's playing its cards and recognition of uh, independent, uh, the, the recognition that came from the Syria is a good example for that. That's why support from the United States, the way it comes, saying that no country which, which does not respect the territorial integrity of Georgia can get any assistance from the United States. It's a very strong statement. It's a very strong political statement. We are grateful for that. And uh, it's important for us to stay on that path and stay on that messaging and maintain this policy. Yeah. Tomorrow, I wish we had another hour. We don't. But I, I want this audience to know that for us, Georgia is a very important country. We remember our friends, and 2,600 years of friendship is something worth remembering. A perfect relationship between Georgia and Israel is worth remembering, and a small country in a difficult region struggling to maintain its democracy, territorial integrity, and friendship with the West is worth remembering. I hope some of you will join us on our next trip to Tbilisi. We were there in February. It's well worth coming with us. Thank you, Tamar, for being with Thank us today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.